Good morning. We are discussing about the subject EC3552 VLSI and chip design. So, in this we are started with unit 1 MOS transistor principles. So, so far we have discussed about MOS logic families, ideal, non-ideal, IV characteristics, CMOS devices. So, and in this particular video we are going to discuss about MOSFET transistor characteristics under static and dynamic conditions. So, in particular this video is about MOSFET transistor characteristics under static and dynamic conditions. So, we know the static condition MOSFET in particularly we are taking about considering about CMOS gate that is CMOS transmission gate. So, it is actually a capacitor ok there is a capacitor exists between the so gate terminal at a gate terminal we have a metal oxide so there is a capacitor so static and dynamic means so we are changing the properties that is we are looking the particularly we are going to study about the CMOS transmission gate which represents the static how it behaves under static condition and the dynamic condition. So, we know the transistor connection for a complementary switch or a transmission gate it is shown in the figure. So, you look at the figure. So, here we have a two gates one is um, uh, above we have one uh, gate another one is the below is the another switch. So, we have two input voltages we are tying two source and uh, two drain ok two source are connected and we are giving as a input and two drain we are connected and one is taken where we are taken the output voltage and consider you see one is bubble there is a bubble uh, at the one uh, transistor and there is no bubble at the other transistor which shows both are complementary to each other. If one is a NMOS transistor and the other represents the PMOS transistor and in collection it represents a CMOS transistor. So, here it has a N channel transistor and a P channel transistor. So, you see the above one represents the N channel and the below one represents the P channel transistor. It has a separate gate connections. The gate connections are connected one to the phi dash and another gate connection is connected to the phi. So, the control signal phi is applied to the gate of the N device and its complement phi dash is given to the P device. So, the phi dash represents it is the control signal and phi also represents the control signal. So, okay. so, below one represents the N device. The operation of the transmission gate can be best explained. How we can explain this transmission gate? By considering the characteristics of both the N device and P device as a pass transistors individually. First of we have to discuss the working of N device and P device transistors N pass transistor and P device pass transistor separately then only we can address by treating the charging and discharging of a capacitor via transmission gate. So, first we will see about the N pass transistor and P pass transistor so that only we can go with the uh, treating uh, the, the charging and discharging of a capacitor. So, the charging and discharging it represents the static and dynamic properties of a MOSFET transmission gate. First we will see the N MOS pass transistor. So, referring to this figure that is figure number 2.22 that is as I took from the book it is uh, that uh, hail waste book I will take that. So, here it is the it represents the above figure the load capacitor C L is initially discharged that is V not equal to 0. If V not equal to 0 then we can say it is a static characteristics. Now, we are going to apply the phi control voltage. So, that is initially consider this output dotted lines now C L it represents the load capacitor. So, the load capacitor is initially discharged which means the output voltage V not equal to 0. Also consider the control voltage which we are given to the gate ok. So, this control voltage also 0 which means V G S equal to 0. You see the line marked between the gate and the source. So, input voltage that is V G S equal to 0. Then correspondingly what happens? The output drain to source current, output current drain to source current equal to 0. 
which represents the V0 equal to 0. So, what are all the conditions? Load capacitor, CL is initially discharged. So, output voltage is equal to 0. Next, we are going to apply the control voltage to be in the 0 condition, that is the static state. So, at this point, when control voltage equal to 0, then the IDS current, so drain to source current, the channel we have, in the channel between the drain to source, there will be current flow, no? that will also be 0, because you are not applying anything to the gate. So, the uh, gate drain to source current will be 0. Now, then V0 is also equal to 0, irrespective of the state of the input, so which is not dependent upon the input. Next case, for the dynamic case, if you change the control voltage to be 1, when phi is equal to 1, input voltage, now you are going to apply the input voltage to be 1, now what happens, the pass transistor begins to conduct, if only if you are applying the control voltage to be 1, the pass, that is you are applying voltage to the gate, it is a NMOS transistor, so it begins to conduct, now the transistor begins to conduct and charges the load capacitor towards VDD. So, when it is 0, it is discharged. Now, it is 1, it is going to charge. So, this represents the dynamic action. Initially, VGS is equal to VD. So, okay, the gate to source voltage should be equal to VDD. Since initially, V in is at a higher potential than V naught, the current flows through the device from the left to right. Now, what happens, we know, consider, we are considering initially the gate to source voltage to be at the higher potential, that is VDD. Since it is at a higher potential, the current flows, how it flows? It flows from the left to right. As the output voltage approaches, that is VDD minus, is uh, towards VDD, the output voltage approaches VDD minus V in, then the N device begins to turn off. Now, the output voltage, that is, since it is an N device, it begins to turn off. Load capacitor will remain charged when phi is changed back to 0. Therefore, the output voltage V0 remains at VDD minus V in. This implies that the transmission of logic 1 is degraded as it passes through the gate with V in equal to 0 and phi is equal to 1. Now, what happens? The pass transistor begins to conduct and discharge the load capacitor towards VSS, that is VGS is equal to VDD. Since initially we know V in is at a lower potential than V naught, the current flows through the device. Now, it have what happens? The current flows through the device from right to left. So, this actually, this graph I will show now. now. First, we do, we show it is from left to right. Okay, now it is right to left. As the output voltages approaches VSS, the N device current diminishes. Thus, the transmission of logic 0 is not degraded. So, in N pass transistor, what happens? Transmission of logic 0 is not degraded, but the transmission of logic 1 is degraded. Mm, 0 is not degraded, transmission of logic 1 is degraded. Uh, why it is not degraded? Here it is the N device current one the diminishes. When the output voltages approaches uh, 0 means the N device or the current one the it diminishes. But in case of 1, logic 1 transmission up what happens means the output voltage remains at VDD layer. So, VDD minus V in. So, it remains. This is the reason it gets degraded. That is, in N pass transistor, what is the summary finally? The transmission of logic 1 is degraded, but the transmission of logic 0 is not degraded. Now, we the N pass transistor. So, N mass pass transistor, we had discussed the static and dynamic characteristics, the charging, discharging actions we had discussed. Similarly, next we are going to see about the PMOS pass transistor. Once again, a similar approach we can study. Now, look at this figure. Similar approach can be taken in analyzing the operation of a PMOS pass transistor. 
so in this figure so what happens now you are applying the control voltage to be 1 ok phi is the control voltage that we are giving to the gate so this bubble represents it as a pmos transistor now phi is equal to 1 v in is also equal to 1 now what happens the output v not equal to 0 since it is uh, here if you apply the reverse operation will takes place in n mos what we had discussed if the control voltage that is the gate voltage is 0 means the output voltage is 0 but here in pmos transistor if you apply both are 1 phi equal to 1 v in equal to 1 then we have v not equal to 0 that is the load capacitor cl remains uncharged now idla vandu uncharged changes what is previously there it remains now unchanged okay when phi is equal to 0 the current begins to flow and charges the load capacitor initially there is no charge uncharged now it is going to charge now the load capacitor is towards vdd however when v in equal to 0 next condition consider so initially we consider v in equal to 1 ok and we have two cases when phi equal to 1 what happens v not equal to 0 again when phi equal to 0 v in equal to 1 what happens when phi becomes 0 the current begins to flow and charging action takes place dynamic action takes place however now if you are changing the input voltage to next case input voltage to 0 now what happens if you put input equal to 0 then output equal to 1 that is the load capacitor initially it is charging now, now it is discharging through the p device until how it will be discharged until v naught is equal to v t p threshold voltage at which point the transistor ceases conducting now it stops conducting thus transmission of zero is somewhat degraded through the p device so it is opposite as in case of n pass transistor so there it is not degraded but here in pmos devices transmission of zero is degraded next we will see the behavior the resultant behavior from this table you will see the table so here we have two devices okay n device and p device so okay n mos uh, pass transistor and p represents p mos pass transistor so transmission of one transmission of zero so what it represents in n mos device transmission of one is poor but transmission of zero is good but in a p mos device transmission of one is good but transmission of zero is poor so that is shown in the table so now we are going to combine both the characteristics so that we can construct a transmission gate that can transmit both a logic 1 and logic 0 without degradation. As can be deducted from the discussion so far, the operation of transmission gate, it requires both the true and the complement version of the control signal phi. So now it is very clear why we need phi and phi dash. So the overall behavior can be expressed as when phi equal to 0 the control voltage to the n transistor when phi equal to 0 then it represents n device to be off p device to be off and v in equal to 0 and v not equal to z we will see what is z it is there in the graph that i am showing in the next uh, slide v in equal to 1 and v not equal to z where z refers to a high impedance state and next case what it is when the control voltage is equal to 1 automatically both the devices n device and p device will be on v in equal to 0 v naught is also equal to 0 uh, that is impedance z represents impedance ok here v in equal to 1 v naught also equal to 1 so that is now we are discussed both the transistors separately and we are going to combine both the characteristics together so that with the help of this control voltage phi we can get both the transmission to be good so let us see the device what is this uh, resistance on one side y axis and v in input voltage on the x axis so here we are discussing the device resistance how with this for n device how the resistance will be and for p device uh, how the resistance will be and actually we are combining so that is the dotted lines represents the transmission gate resistance okay so for the n device 
the, the slope is going from left to right. That is what we had discussed in the previous slide. Now. So, how the current flow will be left to right and later it will be right to left. So, that is uh, shown in here and this represents this past transistor characteristics. If you explain, then it comes under the static and the dynamic transistor characteristics. So, this is also uh, CMOS uh, transistor characteristics we had discussed. That is how it behaves under a static and dynamic condition. So, that is with the help of that uh, 5 voltage we had to discuss. So, here actually we are combining if it is CMOS, one is uh, the bubble shows NP MOS and the bu without bubble it represents the N MOS. So, okay, this because with the help of this 5 voltage we are getting the static and the dynamic operations. So, okay, all these uh, contents I have referred from the book Neil H. E. Waste. So, which is the first textbook referred in the syllabus also. Thank you. Thank you all.